The Steam controller is one of the weirdest controllers that I have ever used in my life. It only has one joystick, it doesn't have a D-pad, the face buttons are small and a little too rounded for my tastes, the bumpers feel really too clicky and super loud and hollow almost, and you have to hold it a little bit different than you do a more traditional controller. It's almost like it's sitting in your fingers instead of sitting in your palms when you use the Steam Controller. I thought that you liked the Steam Controller. Oh, I like it a lot. It's one of my favorite controllers ever. But before I talk about all the reasons that I think it's awesome, I wanna talk about why I think it failed. And it really comes down to three parts, like a Venn diagram of failure. Valve usually lets their products speak for themselves. So when the Steam Controller came out, sure, they put out a video that showed how they made the Steam Controller. They put out a video that showed how you could use it with big picture mode, but I don't feel like they ever really gave it that full push. I don't think I ever saw them go on like, IGN and show all of the ways that you could use the Steam Controller. They just kind of put it out there and let it do its thing. Valve should have been posting videos every single week showing how you could use the Steam Controller and Steam Input together in order to do things that you couldn't do with any other input device. Instead, they just kind of put it out there and then let you know users like Rambletan make awesome videos on how to use the Steam Controller. And they did a great job, but it would have had more impact coming from Valve. In addition to that, we just couldn't be bothered. That's right, it's our fault. And when I say our fault, I mean like, we, the collective gaming community. Because of the lack of a real marketing push from Valve, I feel like a lot of people looked at this weird controller that only had one stick and didn't have a D-pad, and they couldn't imagine how you could use this thing to play games, let alone play games that were designed for mouse and keyboard. So people looked at it and they said, that's too big a risk. I don't think that this is gonna be able to work. And they didn't even give it a try. Then there's a lawsuit. Ironberg and Scuff sued Valve because of the back paddles on the Steam controller. Basically, they sued them for patent infringement because they had a lever on the back of the controller that you can use for input. Now. I'm not a lawyer and I'm not going to get into the intricacies of patent law. I'm sure that there would be a thousand well actually comments down below. Actually, that would be pretty good for engagement, but that's not what this video is about. The short version is they got sued, they lost, so they discontinued the controller and sold the rest of their stock at five bucks a piece in order to make up as much money as they could because they had a $4 million um, judgment against them. Didn't they just win the appeal to that case last year? Yeah, they did. So maybe that's the reason that they think that they can put the back paddles on the back of the Steam Deck or maybe it's because they're using completely different um, mechanisms and it doesn't actually violate the patent, I'm not sure. But yeah, you're right, they did do that. Whatever the outcome of the lawsuit, the intransigent nature of people who don't wanna try a new thing and the lack of marketing from Valve means that if you wanna pick up a Steam Controller these days, you better be ready to pay a pretty penny. Now, at the beginning of this, I told you all of the things that I don't like about the Steam Controller, but I still want to say why it's one of my favorites, and that is flexibility. Steam Input is brilliant software. At its core, it takes a button press on a device and translates that into a button press of another device. So on your controller, you can push the A button, and your game sees that you press the space bar and your character jumps. This makes it easy for goofballs like me to figure out a new control scheme that'll make a game play completely different than with the default controls. And honestly, it allows us to play games with a controller with, that would never, ever be possible any other way. Now you can use Steam Input with a normal controller, which is great, but the addition of the touchpads and the gyro meant that the Steam Controller was far more flexible than anything else. You can have menus overlaid on top of your game, you can have a nearly infinite inputs thanks to action layers, action sets, and mode shifts, and this makes it possible to play almost any game with a controller. There's certainly a learning curve, and the Steam Controller is far from perfect, but as far as a first attempt in hardware, I think that Valve hit a home run. So why don't we have a new Steam controller? Why don't we have a version two? Like, why is it that Valve gave up so quickly and just said, forget it, we're just gonna get rid of them? Why didn't they make a different one that used a different mechanism? 
I think they have a plan. Let's imagine for a sec that instead of the Steam Deck, we got a Steam Controller version 2 first. Uh, there would be dancing in the streets. Yes, at least a dozen of you. Very funny, Marvel. Uh, listen, the people who love the Steam Controller really love the Steam Controller. And everybody else just kind of thought it was a joke. Like they looked at it, they said it only has one stick, it doesn't have a D-pad. This thing is useless for playing games. And they said that without ever trying it. So if Valve brought out a Steam Controller version two and it had two sticks and a D-pad and all the other things, while all of us Steam Controller, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Enthusiasts. If all of us Steam Controller enthusiasts would be super happy about it, but everybody else would pretty much ignore it because they have no experience with using Steam input to really configure your game. So what's the plan? I'm getting there. With the Nintendo Switch doing incredibly well, and there not being that much competition in the handheld space, I think it made sense to launch the Steam Deck first for two reasons. Number one, introduce people to gaming on Linux. And number two, introduce people to Steam input. That's step one. Step two is getting your Steam Deck on the big screen. A lot of people that the Steam Deck is appealing to are console gamers, people who have an Xbox, a PlayStation, or a Nintendo Switch. And the thing that all of these have in common is that you can play them on a TV. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can hook up your Steam Deck to a TV. I personally use the iVolar dock. There's a link in the description down below if you want to check that out. But a lot of people want to use first party stuff, and so Valve has you covered there. There's just one problem. You're playing your favorite shooter on the Steam Deck. You're using flick stick in order to control which direction your character is facing. You're using gyro controls to fine tune your aiming, the back paddles to reload, jump, and dash, or ping your enemies for your teammates. And you're using the track pads in order to swap between weapons on the fly. Then you deck your dock. You pick up your favorite third party controller, and suddenly, you don't have all of the options that you had moments before. Boy, it sure would be nice if Valve made a controller that had all these things built in. That's right, that's exactly what you would think. Only then should Valve announce a Steam Deck version 2. One with two sticks and a D-pad, two track pads, face buttons, four back paddles, triggers, bumpers, gyro, the whole kitchen sink. And no one's comparing it to the failed Steam controller. Instead, they're all saying it's the perfect companion to the Steam Deck. Take my money. I know, right? Look, this is wild speculation from a nerd in his attic, but I think, I think the time is right. And in 2023, I believe that Valve is going to announce a Steam Controller version two that is going to pair perfectly with the Steam Deck and probably even a Steam Deck that is just plugged into a TV that doesn't have the portable capabilities, essentially a Steam console. So what do you guys think? Do you think that Valve is going to make a Steam controller version two, or do you think that they will let third parties take all the risk and possibly all the reward? Let me know in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, click that like button. Over here, I've got a video for you to check out about five things that you might not know about Steam input. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. From the Nerd Nest, I'm Bill. Stay rad, everybody.